In this video, we'll do a quick overview of using Adobe After Effects. You'll see here in the outcome that I've stitched together a Photoshop file and several digital video clips. Okay, first of all, when you look at the interface, you see it's broken up into a series of panels or windows. If any of these should drop out, you can always locate them from going to the window pull down and finding the missing panel. Presently, we have a composition area that's available to us, the project area, and we have the timeline down below. On the right hand side you can see a series of panels that allow us to adjust things such as uh, font face, effects, and other uh, sorts of features that might be added to our composition. If you want to bring content into the file, just simply double click in the project panel. If I double click here, I'll get a window that will allow me to go trace down the path to various pieces of content that might be used inside After Effects. All content that's used inside After Effects is externally referenced, so the host file will end up remaining fairly small, probably something under 200K. You'll notice here that I've brought in a composition inside Photoshop as well as a couple pieces of digital video. Down below I've got a series of elements that are structured inside a timeline. Now by default the timeline is empty and has no length to it or no structure. One possibility is to simply drag in a digital video clip and it'll automatically set up the length of your timeline to correspond to that digital video clip. We could also drag in a Photoshop file and instantly the layers of that Photoshop file would be available to us as layers inside our timeline. You'll notice that there is a time indicator here and if I scrub that back and forth across the timeline you can see the various pieces of content that comprise this particular composition. The elements in the timeline that are red are items that were actually produced uh, with a text tool right inside After Effects. The items in the timeline here that have the bluish color they correspond to graphics or roster images that were brought in from Photoshop and the green teal color items represent uh, components um, or items that are digital video clips. As I scrub across here that some of the items terminate and they've been repositioned throughout time and other items extend the full duration of the animation clip. In this particular example the, the two items that extend across the full duration of my timeline are the piece of text that's located here in the upper uh, right hand corner of the composition and also a background color swatch that's made out of black. If you would like to zoom in and out of the timeline, you'll notice there is a zoom time scrubber down here at the bottom of the timeline. If we scrub to the right, we can zoom in and we can actually see an indication of frame by frame. And if we scrub to the far left, we can actually see the full duration. Now in terms of setting up the composition, you can go to the composition pull down and pull down to where it says composition settings. Inside here you could set up the dimensions, the frame rate, and the overall length of your animation. My overall length of the animation is something that uh, in this particular example was manipulated um, on the fly and it's been developed as a consequence of the various pieces that were put into play. It's not a bad idea to set up uh, some duration initially that's longer than you need to and you can always come in and trim this time back. My proportions here, my aspect ratio and pixel dimension is also something that's a bit odd. It's just a consequence of using content that I already had that wasn't really um, formatted for use in this kind of environment. It's ideal to use some sort of proportion and pixel count that corresponds to conventions of, of projection and video display. Um, likewise, frame rate is more sensible if set to some frame rate that corresponds to video projection and display. Um, I've used 12 frames a second here and of course the proportions up above have already been noted. Now you can understand conceptually the bulk of what you would want to achieve inside After Effects here if we just simply scrub through the first few frames. You'll notice we have items that suddenly appear, we have items that translate across the screen, and we have items that fade or disappear um, over time. The translation of items is simply the movement of those items over time. The appearance here of the title quick shelter is an effect um, basically changing the opacity of something over time. 
And in addition, we could add special effects that are not unlike the layer effects that you might use inside Photoshop or other such effects such as motion blur and painting effects and so forth. All of these can be found inside the pull down menu up above for effects, not unlike finding uh, effects and filters that you might use inside Photoshop. For example, uh, we may choose to blur something over time or you may choose to um, manipulate the perspective of something over time or you may choose to stylize um, some item in your composition over time. For example, turning it into uh, various brush strokes or adjusting the texture and so forth. This particular video is not going to cover the use of all of those various effects. Um, that's something you could explore on your own, but essentially the process will be the same. Let's take a look at the first um, thing that changes here, which is the title Quick Shelter. If I look inside the timeline, you can find my layer Quick Shelter, and if I roll that out, you'll notice inside here the value for transform has been changed over time. So I roll that out, and way down here at the bottom I see the value for opacity. You'll notice that initially, if we zoom in here a little bit closer, that the value for opacity is zero. That's clear. We don't see the piece of text. And as we slowly come up on the first keyframe after frame zero, we notice that the value for opacity is now up to 100%. Over that period of time, the piece of text slowly arrives and is made visible. You'll notice likewise on the back end of this that the piece of text slowly disappears. There's two additional keyframes. If we look at the third keyframe, we'll notice it's at 100%. And you'll notice if we come to the fourth and final keyframe here for the title Quick Shelter, we'll see that it's all the way down to 0%. Piece Quick Shelter actually continues or extends on beyond that. And we don't really see it, but you can still see that it's in the frame by these handles. Should you choose to manually uh, manipulate the scale or size of something over time, you could simply just grab these handles and resize, not unlike the transform that you would use inside Photoshop. You can also see, um, as I scrub the time slider here, that the text California Emergency Management Administration slides across the screen. In this case, uh, we're not changing the opacity, but we're changing the position of the item over time. And you'll notice once again there's a keyframe at frame zero that establishes the location of this piece of text off screen. And there's a keyframe uh, at some distance past that, and this is at about one second, where we've established when this is going to commence moving. So the value in both locations for its X position is 733. After that, it slowly translates to the left. And of course, uh, if we all remember, the origin on the screen is in the upper left-hand corner. So if we're translating to the left, we're moving in a negative direction. And you'll notice also, as I scrub the timeline here, that the value for X is slowly changing uh, to a negative X value until the piece of text is off screen and stops at 3000 pixels um, in the negative X direction. You'll also notice in the file, when I scrub the time slider here once again, that we have a white background that's superimposed over the top of this montage of the quick shelter that's placed on a football field. As I scrub across that, you'll notice that the white background slowly fades away, revealing the composition. The white background is used again as a transition between the, the composition and the first animation that we see in the sequence. You'll notice a series of keyframes located here in the timeline that correspond to the changes on that background. And if we zoom in closer, we can check to see what those values are. You see there's a keyframe here at frame zero, and one would assume that since the white background is fully opaque at this time, that's exactly what we have, an opacity value of 100%. As I move the time slider further to the right, and I see the next value here, we'll see once again we're still at 100%, and it's from this moment forward that the white background slowly changes its opacity to reveal the information that's located on the layer down here below. 
which is this photo montage of the quick shelter. You'll notice at that point that we have a value of zero for opacity and if we move to the right once again we once again see that it's still zero basically forcing this to remain at zero opacity across this whole piece of time and then we'll slowly transition back up to 100% opaque after that to obscure this background piece of information until it's used once again at the very end of the composition and if we let our animation uh, play or scrub it all the way out here to the end you'll notice that beyond the last animation once again this montage has been revealed so it remains in the timeline for the whole duration but it's made visible by using this screen that resides on layer 11. For your reference any of the keyframes can be picked up and relocated simply by clicking and dragging them some direction. I'm now going to walk through the process of creating a quick um, example and I started by going to the composition menu pull down to new composition we see the dialogue here we're going to create a new composition we'll just call this test for right now and I'm going to leave the proportions the same which correspond to the content that I've uh, got located here inside my project window and also the frame rate I'll leave that the same because that corresponds to the frame rate of the digital video clips that I have and I'll leave the duration the same for right now although this quick sample will be far shorter than what we see here in the timeline I'll go ahead and click OK and you'll now see we have a blank screen with no substance inside here in our timeline now to begin your composition uh, one of the easiest ways to build up a composition is to start in Photoshop and set up a series of graphics Previously, when I imported all of my content, I imported a Photoshop file which came in as a series of layers. I could simply open up this folder that would include all of the layers inside my Photoshop file and I can simply drag that set of layers right here into the timeline and they'll instantly be placed and the layer numbers and the stacking order here will correspond exactly to the Photoshop file that they came from. In fact, I had the option of importing this as a live Photoshop file, and by doing so, I could go back to Photoshop, make changes, and they would be updated right inside my After Effects file. Recall that all content inside After Effects is externally referenced, so if you change the source material, it will also change inside your After Effects composition. Since I have these items inside my file, you'll notice that um, they're all available. You'll also notice that um, at the moment, everything absorbs the entire duration of the timeline. So one of the simplest things I could do is produce a slideshow inside After Effects just by making adjustments to the elements in my composition. Um, let's let go of all the layers here and if I come to the eye just like you've noticed in other Adobe products if I can turn that on and off it will turn on and off the layer that that corresponds to and what I'd like to do here is move my title just off camera or off screen and I'll select and drag and I can hold down shift as I scrub that to the right. Let's go ahead and move down to the next item and see what that is. It's this first slide. Now in my composition this isn't the item that I want to see first. So I'm going to systematically go through here and isolate the items that I would like to not see first let's leave that one up and then at the very end we have this empty blank screen so if I want to reposition these items potentially I want to use this white screen as a way to mask items um, over time one place to put this is up near the top and I could adjust its opacity over time revealing or covering up items um, on demand I'll pull it up here and then just turn it off for now let's go ahead and turn on the a background that has the composition in it, um, the montage composition. I'm going to pull that up to the top as well. And for this uh, this simple example, we'll leave the um, other items turned off. Okay, so if I roll out on my white screen here, which sits on layer two at the moment, and roll out the transform, what I like to do is have this slowly reveal the background image that we see on the layer beneath. To do that, we'll start by establishing a keyframe here at the beginning for opacity. All I do is click on the stopwatch and a keyframe is positioned. 
it's important to have a, an establishing keyframe at the beginning. If you change something in the future, then you need to make sure that you can control what the original value is. If I scrub to some point in the future, let's just say for the sake of this simple example, I'm going to come out to um, about five seconds. Then I'll create an additional keyframe just by simply changing the value. I'm going to quickly scrub just to establish a keyframe, and I want to make sure that the value remains at 100%. So I'm making sure that this stays white for the first five seconds. Then from five seconds to 10 seconds, I'll have this slowly disappear. So at 10 seconds, I want my value to be zero. And now what we notice is that over time, the background is revealed. If we want this to remain on here for the duration of our slideshow, then of course we do nothing. If we'd like, for example, in the end for this to go back to white, then at that moment I'll establish a keyframe once again. Let's scrub and make sure this remains at zero. So we have it at zero percent for this full amount of time. If we should go ahead and go back to 100% here, you'll realize that this will slowly go from zero back to 100% over that amount of time. So we want this to remain completely clear here. That this has to be, so this has to go from 0% to 0%. And then let's say at 50 seconds, we'll have this return to 100% and we can no longer see the background. Now you'll notice as I scrub that the background information is hidden it's slowly revealed, it's clear to us over time, and then it becomes obscured by the white screen once again. Now in terms of the translation of the text up above, on this item, it's off camera right now, or off screen, I'll establish a keyframe for position simply by clicking the stopwatch once again. And I want to slowly cause this to change over time. So right now my, uh, my value for X is 934. I'll scrub just to establish a keyframe here. And oops, this is at the very end because I left my time slider there. So that's easily remedied by simply grabbing that keyframe and pulling it all the way back here to the beginning. And then let's say um, somewhere out here by 15 seconds, um, we want to be able to see that title move across the screen. Let's say it begins to move as soon as we start to see the background. Okay, so at five seconds, we also want this value to be the same here, 935. So I'll scrub back and forth just to get an establishing keyframe here at 935.5 is what it was before. You'll notice no change. And then between five seconds, let's say, and our 15 seconds, we want to have this piece of text move fully across the screen. So at 15 seconds, we'll scrub to the left and move, and if I recall right, um, this is going to be some substantial negative amount to get all the way off camera. And you'll notice now then that this item is made visible slowly over time and then we're off camera. Okay, so we've just experimented and made a simple example called test. Now, should you like to add a special effect to some layer? Uh, simply make sure that that layer is made active. So let's say, for example, the layer that has the text on it here. I want to have some special effect applied to California as it slides across the screen. To make that available to me, what I'm going to do is uh, go to the effects pull down and pull down to where it says uh, blur and sharpen and I'm gonna try a Gaussian blur. Okay, you'll notice now inside the layer that there's a rollout for effects and if I click on the rollout for effects I find Gaussian blur. Should I choose to add other effects they will also show up inside here and I want to roll out Gaussian blur and find the parameters that go with it. So Somewhere out here as California rolls out into the screen, I'm going to have it begin to blur and then sort of blur out of existence by the time it disappears off, off the uh, picture plane. So maybe potentially around 10 seconds, which is halfway between being on and off, we'll begin to blur this. So once again, we want to have an establishing keyframe back here at the beginning. We'll click on blurriness. I'll move um, 
the value here, scrub the value just to establish a keyframe. I want to get back to zero. And then at 10 seconds, we said uh, we want to begin to blur, so we need to establish a key keyframe here once again um, at zero. And then from 10 to 15, I'm going to have this go from zero to 100% uh, or some, actually this is not measured in percent, it's measured in pixel count. So as I scrub across here, we'll see California slides and then disappears into oblivion. Okay, so that's how you work a, an effect. And so each effect has its own set of parameters. They'll be made available to you inside the effects rollout. You find the specific effect, adjust its values, establish keyframes in the same fashion that you would have for position um, or opacity. A couple of other things. You'll notice that once we've set up test, it shows up in our project window here as a composition. Looks like a little uh, film frame. You'll also notice that there's some other compositions. The original composition that was used to describe how to work all this stuff out uh, shows up here as Kalima. Uh, there's another composition up here called Kalima 2. I'll double click on that. This is basically um, a composition that's been created simply by taking the original Kalima and dragging it into the timeline. So it gets dragged out onto the stage and once there we could resize it like any other object. So you could nest a composition inside a composition. This is how you get the effect of having a, a sort of film strip of a series of videos playing in real time scrolling up or down on the page. Kalima 2 is a composition that contains within it Kalima. And then Kalima 2 composition um, has Kalima 1, or Kalima as it's called up above, is simply just translating across the screen. And of course effects could be applied to that just like any other layer. All the layer effects that you would have used in Photoshop are also available to you. For example, if I come into the layer here that has California Emergency Management Administration, I've got a drop shadow that's applied here. That's an effect that's been um, applied. But we also can use our layer effects. If I've got my text layer here selected and I come to my layer pull down, you can see inside here my blending modes. We might want to do an overlay, for example. You might want to use a difference. So we're getting the illusion of the text being subtracted from the content in the distance. That slowly becomes apparent as we go from white to a background that has lots of color in it. If you want to make adjustments to the value of that over time, you see that all of that's available to us inside here in the rollouts. So there's a lot to experiment with. Now, once you like the outcome and you want to get some output, then you simply go to the composition pull down and pull down to where it says make movie. You'll notice that uh, I've made some other movies in here from this file already. If I roll down, the most recent version is the one that I just asked for. And there's a couple of key things to check here under settings and output module. If I click on settings, you want to be certain that you're getting the appropriate quality, uh, you're getting the full resolution. It is possible to take your composition and instantly produce thumbnail videos just by going down a half or third or quarter, something you might post in a web page, one of your geometries as a map inside 3D Studio, for example, and so forth. We also want to make sure that our frame rate matches up with the content in here. By default, this might be set to 30 frames a second on yours. And then we also want to make sure we check our output. And inside output, uh, you choose your file type. And H.264 is my preference. And then we want to make sure that the color depth and so forth makes sense for what we want. And if you're trying to force this to be stretched into some new proportion and not match up with the aspect ratio that of course that also has to be accounted for here too. So for example my composition is uh, 733 by 480 and if I don't mind the subtle distortion I might go ahead and force this to be squeezed down into this proportion which syncs up more closely with um, other video modules and uh, it'll be a custom output. So I've got a slightly distorted or stretched width and the height is being kept the same. Make sure also no audio, then no, then audio is not checked. If you check this, then you're going to notice your file is larger even though there's no audio inside of it. Once you've done that and you're happy with settings, make sure that you select um, a name for the file. Then you can go ahead and click render and it'll produce the video output like you saw here when we initially started this demonstration.